ladies and gentlemen it's good to see you every uh, it's good to see everybody here um, are is anybody outside still i just want to make sure that everybody is inside and settled down so thank you for coming in here um, and uh, joining us we're talking about change management in the vuca world now it's interesting that uh, the term vuca um, we've sort of started hearing about this as a buzzword in the last few years it was originally coined in 1987 as a management theory that you know the world is volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous um since 1987 it's been that but every time i think the intensity of the volatility the uncertainty complexity and ambiguity just seems to be going up uh, i don't think we need to really define that the world that we are experiencing is indeed vuca right from uh you know new things that we come across blockchain nft and cryptos to uh, 0% interest rate in central banks going to negative interest rates i find it difficult to explain to my daughter that you know uh, you give money out and you'll get less money back right uh, but we've seen that environment in the world um and it's certainly extremely complex and ambiguous and in that for most people Uh, especially during the times of covid um survival seemed to be the uh, point you know that and how do we really survive and make sure that the business is continue to stay there thankfully most of us has come out of that we are resilient so you know stronger because we've learned to adapt and um kcf 2.0 was born through this fire of covid right i mean uh, we were an organization more than 25 years old did seminars bringing knowledge to the community and uh, covid happened we moved away from this event kind of structure that we are we've been familiar with you know where we meet people greet people uh, have a human interaction and uh, listen to people talk and suddenly we went to an online world um, and then kcf 2.0 was born from there and uh, kc kcf has responded to this vuca in the world right uh, and that's where 2.0 was born where we said that we need to change things and we changed things dramatically so we actually got kcf 2.0 where we realized that survival is not the objective it seemed like that but survival is not really the objective we want to grow and thrive and do well and prosper and in order to do that um uh, kcf 2.0 is building out a chain of um uh, programs that will help businesses do a 10x instead of a you know incremental growth and uh, you know when on one side we're talking about vuca on the other side we're saying 10x we're saying survival ke vande the right and suddenly how are we talking about this and uh, i think kcf is showing this by example we brought in kirit bhai gala uh, from gala precision um, as a president to disrupt kcf from inside out right and um, while we still we're on the path of doing 10x for kcf itself and while that's happening we want to be able to tell you all that a 10x is probably easier than an incremental 2x so we'll take a couple of minutes to just see a short video um on really is 10x easier than 2x i'd like to discuss an idea that really gets people's attention when i say it and this is the idea that as an entrepreneur it's a lot easier to grow 10 times than it is to go for two times progress and growth now when i say this i can see people's head shake wondering how this could possibly be true and i say it has to do with what immediately happens to your thinking your innovation, your decision making, your communication and your action the moment that you fix your brain on a 10 times goal. The moment someone seriously commits themselves to the idea of 10 times, they visualize where they want to be and intellectually they engage with a future 10 times result. So they've locked it into their brain, but not only that, they've emotionally committed themselves to actually taking the actions and making the decisions and communicating in a way that would actually achieve the 10 times result. So two things, there's a intellectual engagement and then there's an emotional commitment. 
Now, before you had the 10 times goal, your mind was on everything. But once you make the 10 times commitment and you see a clear result out in the future that's bigger and better, your brain becomes like a filter, a 10 times filter, and it looks at everything you're doing right now, all the activities, and it begins to say, this belongs to 10 times, so you keep it. And that doesn't belong to 10 times, so you're either going to have to stop doing it, you're going to have to eliminate it, or you're going to have to give it to somebody else. You delegate it or you outsource it, but you're not going to do it anymore. So once you filter your activities using 10 times, then you can focus on the marketplace and selling in a very specific way. You used to look at the whole marketplace, but now you're just looking at a niche part, a 10 times niche part of the marketplace. You used to sell a number of products and services, but now you're just going to sell something very specific. And the criteria that you're using to make all these decisions is, will it help take us to 10 times or will it prevent us from going to 10 times? So this whole mindset, what I call the 10 times mindset, creates a totally different way of operating in the world. If you have a 10 times mindset, what happens is that you become connected to all the other capabilities in the world that can multiply you. And you enhance your ability to connect with people who have really great skills and they support you and they push you towards 10 times. Now they won't do it if you're going for two times. The most successful and ambitious multipliers in the world are interested in 10 times, not two times. Just relate that to the digital world where everything is either on or off. It's either one or it's zero. And so in the 21st century, this is what I always say to entrepreneurs, it's always easier to grow 10 times than it is to go for two times. So um, with that, uh, the mindset is what really matters, right? And uh, what we're going to talk about today is in order to get that mindset and in order to execute that, change management as the principle in the VUCA world is what we need to learn about and adapt. So we're going to first listen to a keynote speaker uh, and the president of KCF, uh, Kirit Bhai, uh, talk about change management and its principles. And uh, then we will talk to the mentors and like the video was talking about that moment you have a 10x mindset, then people out there will come to support you because people out there are looking for that 10x mindset. Now these are people who have agreed to be mentors, uh, some of the mentors for KCF 2.2 and its members who are incredibly interested in growing themselves 10x. And they will come and support because they have done this and they've done, taken this journey and they'll be more than happy to make sure more of us can embark on this journey and share their experiences and the challenges that they faced and how they managed to overcome those challenges to go 10x and beyond. So with that, um, invite Kirit Gala uh, for his keynote speech. Thank you. So I don't need a podium. I like to be freely walking. How many of you agree that 10x is easier than 2x. Okay, almost 25%. Not bad, actually. And uh, in fact, this audience itself has at least 10% of the people who have actually done 10x either in revenue or valuation. Uh, many of them are going to sit here and explain you how it is done. But uh, today's topic is on change management. So. I want it to be really interactive. I am not going to take uh, in, you into theories, though there are theories and theories on change management. What, what is one thing that everybody likes to give, but nobody likes to take? Excellent. What is one thing that everybody wants other to do, but they don't want to do? Change. And what is one thing which everybody thinks is an asset, but in today's world has become a liability? Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, from 10 or 15 years, I have been shouting that experience is dangerous and it is really the today's VUCA world is the 
best example of the environment where it has become like that. So, and it, it's not like people like me alone. Uh, this is uh, Lee's Wiseman. In 2019, Lee's was the number one management thinker or leadership thinker in the world. She's always been top 50. She's saying in rapidly changing world, experience can be a curse. Careers stall, innovation stops, and strategies go stale. Being new, naive, or even clueless can be an asset. New, naive, and even clueless. Now, you know, but, but Gabo is clueless. And actually, if you understand this, a lot of intelligent people predicted a lot of things in past. I just want to take you through some of these interesting things that, for example, one of the senior person of 20th century Fox said, television won't last because people will go, get soon tired of you know, that idiot box. But millions and millions of televisions were sold. Someone said, there is no reason for any individual to have a computer at home, which was someone from digital equipment. That company does not exist, but every home has a computer today. The world potential market for copy machine, this was told by IBM Top Brass to Xerox founder that you can maximum sell 5,000, but you know, again, millions were sold. Now, during COVID, we started realizing that newspaper may not be necessary. Now we are again back to newspapers, but in 1995, Newsweek, you know, released an article that no online database will replace your daily news, but I can guarantee you in five to 10 years, you will not be having paper news, newspaper. Stu Ballmer, the CEO of Microsoft, he said Apple will not be successful. This phone is not going to work. Who got replaced? Stu Ballmer. There are thousand unicorns in the world today. And each unicorn, as you know, is valued at more than 7,000 crores. And we are not even counting those between, you know, say 100 to 1000 number. It can be so up to 7000 crore. I assume there will be at least 10,000 startups were valued more than 2000 or 3000 crores. And what is the age of these guys? 34 when they found it. So with due respect to experience in my latest conversion of this idea, I think up to 30 or 35 and around 8 to 10 years experience is what is required to really set up a company or think differently. So dear friends, I am telling you one thing, if your son or daughter is around 30 plus or has 8 to 10 years experience, leave him alone. Totally, totally. There is no point in giving your valued experience or ideas to this new generation now. And Renil is here, he will throw more light on that. So, as I said, I am not going to get into theories, but like medical science, management science has also really evolved now. There are a lot of theories and there are a lot of set formula for you to implement and really change. So, simply, see this was about in 2014, I made this presentation on change management, uh, in fact, para, and a lot of people were there. And we discussed about restructuring, we discussed about motivation of the employees. It is all bullshit now. Doesn't work. You know, what works is real hardcore pivot. Now, this word pivot is a very key word to understand and it, you have to learn from this startup world. So, I have at least 15 examples of what is pivoting. And guys, if you are in any kind of business, you have to understand what is pivoting you, and you have to drive that pivot. So after Steve Ballmer left, Satya Nadella became the Microsoft CEO, as everybody knows. And he, so before 2014, the only word when we thought of Microsoft, we thought of was Windows. 
Do you remember? He, in from day one, he never uttered a word Windows. It was always about cloud computing. That's how Microsoft transformed. That's how they made the, you know, recreated the whole value. YouTube actually started as a dating site. So, I don't know uh, how many of you know that. Tune in and hook up was the slogan. And sincerely, they were so much customer driven that eventually, when people use, started using YouTube and they started using it for prolific different reasons, they changed it to what it is today. Spotify, how many of you use Spotify for songs? During COVID, Spotify changed the whole model, I mean added uh, the podcast to the model. So, if you want any knowledge today, it is easily available on podcasts. And Spotify is doing that. Netflix is a very interesting story. As you know, like Shemaru, it was only in DVD mail distribution in USA. In fact, Blockbuster was bigger than Netflix in USA. And Netflix actually started thinking that what is the future? And they saw that if 4G comes, 5G comes, the future is going to be direct streaming. And they focused on streaming. Not only that, today you will be surprised, in Oscar also Netflix movies are going. So they, they are in content now. So apart from streaming, they actually make movies and compete with Walt Disney's of the world. So that level of changes they brought in. Twitter was again, actually is the other case. They started with podcasts, but then they realized there was a lot of political and social mileage achieved through Twitter by celebrities and they realize that this is a big market and any person who tweets feels like a celebrity and then they came up with the model of tweeting. Starbucks promoter, he started selling coffee machines but he traveled to Italy and he saw cafe bars and he realized that you know I need to do a chain of Starbucks rather than selling coffee machine because the market is going to be limited. IBM from personal computers to IT consulting. Louis Gessner was the CEO of IBM and there was a book that elephant, how to make elephants dance. So, you know, people said IBM was so big at that time that people said, ye elephant hai, ye kaise dance karega? But Louis made elephant dance. How many of you had Wrigley chewing up? Everybody. So this guy was a soap salesman and he started selling soap and soap bethne ke liye he started selling baking powder and baking powder bethne ke liye he started giving chewing gum as a free thing. And eventually he realized ke yaar ye lagta chota hai but iska market bhoot bada hai. How can you imagine Wrigley is going into billions and it went. They almost created a market. Nokia was a rubber producer, Toyota was a textile loom manufacturer and so on. I mean, there is a very interesting story. I just wanted, I am, I don't, I am not been to, it is Igniter Dating's uh, site or app and uh, they started in USA and they had about 5,000 or 50,000 members. In India they launched and in one week they had 50,000 members. And he realized that geographically when you go to such large market, the scope is much bigger. So the trying, what I'm trying to say is pivoting not only your business model, your customers, but sometimes geographies of the market and sometimes, you know, the customer base. Android. Now some Indian examples, Bharti Airtel, you all know Sunil Mittal started with uh, selling automotive parts or cycle parts, then went into distributing uh, mobile phones then went into Airtel and now looking at internet data as a service. Radio we all know has emerged because of FM and movie watching again from single screen to multi screen to you know streaming to a lot of things. So we are all in some kind of business and we need pivoting. Why do we need pivoting? Because in business, if you are not growing, you are not going to survive.
and we don't want to play a survival game we want to play a growth game so for example if you are a traditional restaurant business you know you can most of the people started delivering because of covid but before that they should have and so on i mean there is a flat rate you can have meals per week you can address b2b market you can have your own branded products and so on so for each business i think what we are going to do in kcf uh, with mentors or otherwise we are going to have a lot of counseling to such aspiring entrepreneurs whom to guide on such big things so there are there is going to be a package including the organization structure or recruitment but the the big picture has to be very clear what do you need to do so in your business please start thinking about this that you have to create a high purpose mission nobody is going to go after small things no no employee is going to re be retained if you are doing small things you are not talking about 10x or 20x or 100x the attracting and retaining talent is going to be the biggest challenge don't be afraid to let go the past this is a million dollar thing if you carry the past you are going to bury yourself under the past leverage no one most important thing among all these success stories was leveraging the core competency so if you have some business we are we are not saying you know go get into some other business but you know within those businesses what is your core competency which are your strengths what are your weaknesses what are your partner strengths leverage that usme se kya bada ho sakta hai is the key digital transformation is the key thing i how many of you have heard of this term and are doing about something about it digital transformation not even 10% so the challenge is what is digital transformation is a separate topic i actually wanted to cover little bit but really today it is not possible but basically are you you know like moving to online marketing are you selling to online stores are you implementing erp yourself are you doing lot of thing like crm i will just give you one simple example everybody used to market person to person or through email campaigns are you using linkedin today most of the recruitments are now being done on linkedin lot of corporate email billing is now done on linkedin so you know this is the kind of shift which has to start from you how do you change so basically i just want to quickly cover two models uh, one is by john quarter so this is very ceo driven this is very entrepreneur driven you have to be convinced about the change and you have to be clear about what changes you want to bring that is very important so you can have a team which is re getting ready for that change in your organization and you have to kind of create a vision and communicate that vision to that team and the team has to have that fire to change there is another model so if you if you are a larger organization say about 200 people 300 people you need to have a regular meeting on the environmental scanning which means what are the changes happening in your industry landscape in your competitive landscape what are the competitors doing what are the customer ex expecting from you in future and you have to adopt or you have to foresee that and create a team which then regularly discusses that question and finds the answer from the customers along with the team then you have to develop a shared vision that you know this is what we are for example we are in say electrical switches and we want to get into fans we want to get into so many other things so you know the top management team has to be in place when you grow to that level these experts have to come in they have to understand the customer and they have to guide then you have to have a support team within your organization you have to give support through hr it and other uh, you know parallel staff functions which all, we all know that and finally this has to be institutionalized so this is a little theoretical but what i'm trying to explain you here is that don't be afraid of change 
there are models available there are support system available only thing is you have to start thinking big that what changes you want to bring in there are we need to talk about internal change mechanisms and our community in general uh, small businesses are very good in theory e which means uh, economic perspective of internal changes which means jo cost zyada hai wo kam karo and so on but there is theory o which also looks at organization development with medium to long term vision and hence you cannot cut all the costs at one time but have a clear road map to the change so for example there is a suppose a grocery chain or uh, any of these chain so this is one of the case studies they removed the hierarchy now these are all medium size organizations we are talking about say 20 30 50 stores and the structure point of view no hierarchical structure works today if you want to attract youngsters you have to have team lead structures which we did in kcf as a first step what i am trying to say is you know senior vp vp board uske upar advisor and so on this the decision making process gets so long and bigger that youngsters are getting frustrated with that so sbu structure normally helps you have to have a clear pnl responsibility to these young dynamic people and you know separate them out with complete authority so what they did they closed some shops uh, but most importantly they chose three stores where the managers or the people running were given the complete authority to run the way they wanted and they experimented and what was allowed there failure was allowed there that is very important because the the generation gap comes mainly from the elders worry of failures and i think to address that there has to be some mechanism some way of organization structuring where failures are allowed experimentation is allowed risk taking is allowed then this talent will foster most of the successful promoters of uh, these uh, unicorns or successful startups were not successful in first time most of them failed for one or two times and your biggest teacher is failure and i think the whole phenomena of failure is should be considered as a learning experience rather than you know a deciding factor of performance of someone then you can have esop and other reward systems what are the challenges in change so when you once you decide that you want to change your organization for particular purpose you want to implement say erp or crm or digitization or align with someone or prepare the organization for exit or ipo it can be any reason the biggest hurdle is very interesting that harvard business review says 66 percent this was uh, about 5 10 years before today's the number our uh, number is 70 percent plus so 70 percent of the change uh, objectives or change ideas fail and main reasons are employee resistance and communication so when some new idea comes from from your partner from your director from your next generation how do you react so mostly everybody wants to be in the comfort zone though you have to really let your comfort zone go second is fear of losing money so most of the people sacrifice huge opportunities for the little sum or little fear of losing money then many organizations people can't leave control you know for some reason or the other they just want to be important so many times uh, we have seen that you know lot of people when we tell them to implement some system they will say ar fir main kya karunga so bola aapko you have to guide you have to lead say nahi nahi wo roz do teen problem nahi aate aur solve nahi karta wo maza nahi aata hai it's a sense of control right or it is a sense of ego massaging for yourself and people don't leave want to leave it strong belief that outside professionals cannot manage the way we do 
बट वी डू करके आप समझो 25-50 करोड़ जो भी पहुंचे हो एंड देर आर कंपनीज एंड कंपनीज एंड दे आर मेकिंग मिलियंस ऑफ डॉलर्स और बिलियंस ऑफ सेल्स तो वो कैसे हो रहा है सो दिस माइंड सेट हैज टू चेंज देन लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल हैव इमोशनल अटैचमेंट टू द कंपनी और सम एम्प्लॉई विच इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू यू नो ओवरकम सो यू हैव टू बी रैशनल इन एनालाइजिंग कंपनी इज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन इट इज नॉट you know it is not an individual you cannot have an emotional attachment to the company remember when covid came this is a very psychological aspect it's a nice one uh, when covid came and experts so say assuming 10 din 15 din hua tha and experts started saying that it is going to last 2 to 3 years what was our re reaction denial so when any change comes this is the cycle you go through You start with denial. Some senior person leaving, and पहले उसको तुम बोलो यार क्या जा ही नहीं सकता है हो ही नहीं सकते so and then you start getting angry कि ऐसा मेरे साथ क्यों हो रहा है ऐसे इसने क्यों किया why is it happening then you start bargaining कि नहीं अभी ये एक साल तो रहेगा ही यार तीन साल का बोलते थे तो अभी लगता है एक साल रहेगा and so on or some any other example you take you go through this cycle then you kindly go into depression but finally when testing times happen and acceptance comes it is better than stability this we have observed time in and time out so the point is any change you know takes you through this cycle but it is always the life will get better after the change we are seeing that in valuations we are there seeing that in businesses today so post covid we are doing so well you know most of us so i think that's the key now what is your reaction look at the x axis and you know the more less seasoned you are less mature you are you take longer time to accept change and go through this cycle you know angry ban ke 4 din baithe hain and denial mein 8 din baithe hain ya kidhar chale gaye and so on the more maturity you get the more seasonedness you get this time cycle compresses and that's your objective of seasoning yourself so changes are going to be inevitable just manage yourself to reduce the time cycles of this cycle this is the key take away of this presentation so whenever some change come you know be ready for that ha aaya theek hai ek ghante mein main isme se nikal jaunga i will first deny 10 minutes and then come out of it thoda gussa bhi aaya angry hua then come out of it bargain whatever come out of it as fast as possible that's your key thing now what are the solutions of you know these issues so your own conviction is the major thing any change you are bring you want to bring in in your organization you have to be convinced that it is good for the organization and good for you unless you are convinced it is not going to percolate down there is no way your employees are going to understand or anybody else is going to understand i was talking in some other forum and i started by saying that there is a way if you don't want to change it is fine if you don't want to change it is your choice but then you have to leave your business and eventually your family will leave you so you know choice is yours but i think conviction is necessary communication is the second step continuously communicating to everybody that what is going to happen so leaders who communicate change effectively can improve you know their direct report performance by 29 or 30% this is a very documented management fact there is a lot of uh, you know the steps involved in under when you communicate you have to accept you have to listen i think listening is a very big uh, virtue which is missing in most of the people you have to listen you have to understand their concerns you have to address their concerns and so on and on so i don't want to go deep into it you are you are all successful mature people but the point is listening is the key and please understand that sometimes for you change may be natural but most of the people really fear a lot about any changes and they have to be addressed their concerns have to be addressed and finally uh, i will just take 5 minutes of uh, some mantras uh, for change manage particularly for entrepreneurs so in past olden days it was said that if it is not broken don't change it 
if you ask any of your fathers or grandfathers, they say, chappal bhi jab tak pura giske khatam nahi hota, change mat karna. And people started buying new clothes without any, you know, because of fashion and other things. Elder generation was really unhappy about that. But the new mantra is 4C. And even if it is not broken, you have to change. You, you know, like digital uh, revolution is coming, some competitor is disrupting your organization, or it is seeing, you are seeing that in America, and a lot of people think, oh, USA mein ho hai, apne nahi hoga. most of the things which happened in the Western world came here. So I think just be ready to foresee. Change really brings a lot of opportunities, trust me. I have seen a lot of entrepreneurs thriving on change. You know, making tons of more money than they, what they were making earlier. And more successful and happier. The point is, for example, you know, IBM is a very famous case. Because of internet, they survived. Because, you know, otherwise PC was almost dying business. And then they started with services and all that. So, a lot of, uh, we will, of course, hear from the panel how they are, uh, you know, seeing this, but uh, change really brings in a lot of opportunities. It is a matter of your conviction and it is a matter of your communication to your organization. Please, if anybody, any of you loves routine, then you are not meant for running the dynamic business in today's dynamic situation. It is better that you take up some functional role or some, you know, some area which doesn't require to be so dynamically changing. Otherwise, entrepreneurship today, you know, keeps you on totally on your toes. You have to constantly be jumping around what is happening and find the opportunities. Fear of unknown is natural, but as I said, you know, it always ends up in a better situation. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Keep asking that question. It's a very interesting question, uh, you know, you need to ask. Whether it is bungee jumping or try learning German or going for a scuba diving, but otherwise also you have to expose yourself to change, to train yourself to reduce that cycle. So don't be afraid it's all about mindset. Lot of people, you know, we love to meet people, those who are like us. So if you are slightly negative in mindset, you like to meet people also negative. Some of you Ashok Gai ko mile, Ashok Gai mulega, are bought a chai, maja ara, age maybe meto maja. What I mean is you find someone who says, are to be dukhi, maybe dukhi, yeah, dukhi dukhi milke, or dukhi ote. The point is, I think you have to meet people who are open to change. Don't get stuck with some people's psychology of being negative, some people's attitude of being negative, and so on. It's okay. We pass. You know, you have to move on. We like to discuss a lot of things around these kind of people, rather than discussing more about successful people, positive people, happy people, you know. Always play to win. Don't so once you adopt the change, once you understand that you want something big, you want to get into, say you are 50 crore and we are talking about 500 crores now. And you know, the shivering starts, ke, 500 mein kitne honge, ye hoga, hoga. So, but play to win. You cannot play, you cannot start with a loose wicket, ke, yaar, gaya to gaya, jane de, to nikal you, you, you have to understand that so many millions of people have done it. And you can also do it, everybody has that potential. You know, in IQ, on a, on a normal curve, difference between uh, your IQ and Bill Gates IQ will be hardly 20-30 points, maybe. And there are more intelligent people who are scientists and technocrats than these entrepreneurs. So IQ doesn't matter. Nothing matters. It's the attitude. It's the mindset. Also, in our community, particularly, I want to address this point that we are so much community and society conscious. I have been very, very surprised that so many intellectuals being, you know, either aisa hi penna chahiye, either aisa jana chahiye, aise behave karna chahiye, us case mein to jana hi chahiye, and so many things. Why? You are yourself an amazing creation of God. Every individual is so different, so nice. 
so beautiful from within. You don't need outside recognition all the time. Why do you need outside recognition all the time? There is no question. Once you believe in yourself, you respect yourself. Trust me, the world changes the moment you at least start appreciating yourself, your own beauty, your own convictions, your own world. It's not about being, you know, in isolation, but it's about being yourself. I don't need to say, but nobody should ever change the core values of ethics or, you know, other things. And lastly, the we are not talking, see most of the people, normal, common people work today for survival. If you don't do this, what may be habitual. You change your mindset, you don't work for survival, you work for enjoyment, you work for growth, you work for making yourself, you know, reaching to a newer height, experiencing new things, becoming a better person, so many things, so many positive things are happening around the world. So with all that, thank you very much. It was fantastic uh, talking to you all. And I'm also looking forward to this panel discussion where we are going to learn a lot. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we'll reserve the questions uh, for the panel discussion. Kirit Bhai will also be on the panel discussion. So um, you know we can ask the questions at that point. Uh, can I request uh, Philip uh, to please come on stage? Uh, and talk about the next program. I think that's very interesting and important uh, in keeping with what really KCA wants to do. Please listen to this. I just like to uh, compare uh, change with uh, some of the uh, punctuation marks in English. So I guess, you know, uh, when I look at change and it comes to me, and uh, I, I kind of then uh, say that that punctuation mark is that person. So say for example, uh, if there is some full stop, so if change is happening and there is a full stop, means that person is stopping and saying, bhai, mujhe aage nahi jana hai. Uh, the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, punctuation which I can use is uh, an exclamation. Change hai or ye kya ho gaya? He's not able to, uh, or he or she is not able to absorb that change. But I believe all uh, people sitting here in the audience are all question marks. I mean, not uh, question marks, but uh, first question mark, because you know, you have to be curious. If change is coming, you have a question mark, means you're curious and uh, you're looking at uh, what's happening. How can I change things? Or how can I adapt to that change? And after that, you're a comma. Because now you feel that you just want to do that comma and move on in life and uh, take things uh, to the next level. So now uh, uh, we are having a, an event where uh, you know, we are going to have multiple commas because uh, we are going to do uh, for the first time in KCF's history an overnight event uh, which is uh, on the 10th and 11th of uh, June uh, 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 which uh, is just coming. We are going to have like uh, major speakers. So what I'll do now is I'll just ask the question to myself and answer myself because in the panel, I guess, uh, Kirit Bhai will ask questions, but here I'll ask the questions because there are a lot of people who have got questions. So the first question is, ke, uh, uh, it'll, it'll uh, you know, uh, affect my family time. Sorry, we've kept it on Friday and Saturday. Sunday, ko you'll spend your family time at home. Uh, what is happening in the networking, you know, I don't know so many people, there are so many young new members which have come in. Will I be able to meet people? Yes. Because uh, if you're going to be there for uh, two days, what else will you do? You're going to meet people, you're going to do a lot of networking. Sirf lecture yoga either? Kya? I mean, pura sirf yehi gyanit doge? No, we are going to have partying, we are going to have, uh, you know, entertainment. And of course, uh, the biggest thing is you'll be able to mingle with people. And uh, that will create uh, uh, maybe long-term uh, bonding relationships and maybe businesses which can uh, grow amongst uh, uh, people. And more so, I guess, you know, uh, if we spend a little bit time with each other, there can always be uh, uh, new possibilities which can open up. So here is the event. I would say that, you know, you're going to receive a message. Uh, we have very limited seats. We have got 100 seats. The first 100 people come in and then uh, the shutter closes. So uh, I would say that just enroll, come. Uh, I am sure that it's going to be a cracker of an event. Uh, we have got uh, lined up, uh, you know, the 
sponsors. So big thanks to our Platinum sponsors, which is Navneet Publications, Shemaru and Gala Precisions. Little uh, round of applause will help. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, our gold sponsors, which are uh, uh, three sponsors, which are already there in the gold uh, category. Uh, any other sponsors who want to come forward are welcome. We can uh, help you out with uh, uh, the other uh, uh, you know, uh, details. And I would say that this uh, is a one-time opportunity. Uh, guys, come up and uh, you know, enroll. Uh, so here uh, is the event, which is the 10x Growth Summit. It is at Radisson uh, Lonavla. And uh, uh, we will be having an overnight stay for which you'll have to pay for the other things we are going to take care. So uh, uh, please uh, do sign up at the earliest. Thank you. Thank you, Karit. Uh, th thank you, Philip. So uh, in line with change, I'm adapting to the fact that I was feeling a little cold, so I've worn my coat, which again was a change from the fact that uh, we've uncoated and undressed ourselves a little bit from uh, KCF uh, originally, right? So I think the idea is that let the content do the job, and let's talk about people who have actually gotten there and um, made the change happen. I'm very excited to invite uh, the panelists on stage now. Uh, and if I can have Dheeraj Bhai to felicitate uh, the panelists, please. Um, I have uh, first uh, Mr. Ashok Shah, <laughs> past president of KCF. I will do a brief introduction of all the panelists. Most of them don't need introduction, but we'll have to do a customary introduction. Um, thank you, Ashok Bhai. Next, we have Mr. Sunil Gala, Namik Education. We have Mr. Parag Cheda of Print Pipe and Fittings Limited. Thank you. Mr. Renil Gogri, Director at Aarti Industries Limited. And we have uh, Mr. Milan Galantra. Um, very grateful to him uh, to be joining us. Uh, he is uh, ex-founder and CEO of uh, Mile Software and now running Finalika and uh, One Silver Bullet. And we have uh, Kirit Bhai, MD and CEO of Gala Precision. Uh, Thank you, thank you, Dheeraj Bhai.